Um, now, we only have one force more, and then we're done. That's it. The whole truss will be solved. Um, so you can either do the free body diagram at C or at D. Uh, it doesn't matter either way. Um, I'll just pick D. So label my work, free body diagram at D. Okay, so we have point D and we have 100 newtons of force coming down on D. That's the only external force. Uh, we have a force vector going over here towards C, a force vector going over here towards E, and a force vector going over here towards B. Remember, we draw them going away from the point of our free body diagram. All right, and we know some of those. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, now, the only the only force that we need to know here is C D. All right, um, and so C D. I'm going to need at some point to use a trigonometric function, either sine or cosine, and I'm going to need to figure out this angle right here. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and draw. A triangle. I'm going to draw this triangle here where we drop down a perpendicular. So there's the perpendicular altitude that we drop down. This is point C, this is point D. We know this is 6. That's not the first time we've seen that. Um, and then we do need to figure out though what this unit is. And uh, we can do that pretty easily. We know that this is 3 and that this impedes 1 into that 4. So this is from here to here, this is 3. Okay, and so if we're talking about this angle right here, the tangent of angle D opposite over adjacent is 6 over 3 or 2. So inverse tangent the negative first of 2 equals inverse tangent of 2 and we get 63.435 63.435 degrees and so we'll write that in over here 63.435 degrees alright again um, the only force that we don't know is CD okay so um, we need to use either the sum forces of the in the X direction or in the Y direction um, and I would say that it might be a little bit easier well no actually I think it's easier either way so I'll go ahead and just start with the Y direction for once the sum of the forces in the Y direction equals zero so zero equals all right let's start with it force of CD it's negative when we put it in this equation because it's going down. So the force of CD negative times we only want the Y part of it. So we need to times that by sine of 63.435. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? Minus 100 because that's going down. And then we have minus force of DE it's minus because it's going down and we only want the y part of that so we need to times um, by the sine of that angle there now we didn't figure out that angle uh, but I think we do know that um, if I bring you back to the free, di free body diagram at E we figured out that this angle was 56.31 so that means this angle is also going to be 56.31 degrees again for the same reason alternate interior angles so times sine 56.31 degrees okay um, now we don't know force CD but we do know force of DE so I'm going to rewrite this and fill that in minus and then what is force of DE uh, well if I go back to my free body diagram at E my force at DE was negative 105.76 
negative 105.76 times sine of 56.31 degrees. Okay, now my only unknown is FCD. Okay, so now that I have that all written out, what I want to do is move this term over plus FCD, and this is part of that term also, times sine 63.435 degrees. So that's going to come over to this side. I'm also adding it to that side. So FCD times sine of 63.435 degrees equals everything else. Um, it's going to equal negative 100. You could write plus 105.76 because that's negative negative times sine 56.31 degrees. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and figure out what that right side is. Actually, no, I'm going to divide both sides by sine 63.435 degrees. I also have to show you how I'm typing this in my calculator. So in the end, this cancels out, and I have FCD equals. All right, this is how I'm going to type this in my calculator. I'm going to do the top first and press enter. So negative 100 plus 105.76 times sine 56.31. Enter. Then I'm going to divide by sine 63.435, and I get negative 13.42. And that's Newtons of force, and that's a compression force. So there it is. All I need to do is write it, and I'm done. So I'm going to write it as 13.42 Newtons of force and compression. And that is a completed truss. At least in my class, that's probably the most difficult that we'll get.